Good morning, this is Norco Christian Church Worship Online for Easter Sunday, April 4th, 2021. I'm so glad to have you with us today as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I'll be talking in a moment about that subject and telling you why I believe that the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the greatest event that ever occurred in history. I'll be giving you three of my reasons why I believe that is so. And so I'm glad you're with us. We'll be leading into a wonderful communion service. And to prepare our hearts and our minds will be the wonderful sounds of Dixie Sunshine. So we're glad you're with us today. God bless you. And we'll begin our service in just a moment. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. And saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, that would have been John himself, who is writing this account, and said, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. Father in heaven, we thank you so much today that you have given us this opportunity to share together. We pray that you will strengthen us now as we enjoy the beautiful sunshine that you've given us this morning as a symbol of the hope that we have in the resurrection of Jesus. Now, Lord, we ask your guidance, your blessing upon us as we share these moments together in celebration of your glory. For it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I want to welcome all of you. Please be seated. We are going to begin right now. <laughs> I will know my Savior when I come to Him By the mark where the nails have been When I cross over I will shine Yeah. 
by his side Instead of on his precious On his precious God I know when I come to him Christ must bear me sunshine and we're glad to be with you on this beautiful Easter morning we just have a couple more performance pieces and then we're gonna all be singing together and worshiping the Lord on this beautiful Easter morning
between staying together in that place in a church with the benches of war. How dear to my Lord, how precious the moment we stood shaking hands and sing a song. Well, in Sin, I was thinking there's no one to guide my way All my life was overshadowed Till I heard the Savior say If you give heed to the blessed promise And become a child of mine When we enter the gates of heaven We will shine, 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 shine. Oh, I'm gonna shine Like stars in the morning And your mansion will be mine Along with the world's eternal name in this heart of mine, when the inner gates of heaven shine, shine, shine. Oh, I'm gonna shine like the stars in the morning.
So you'll find in your bulletin some lyrics to the things we're going to be doing with you. Did you have a scripture for this? Yes. yes. That's all right. So John 19, verses 17 to 19 says, So they took Jesus, and he went out bearing his own cross to the place they called the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha, where they crucified him and with two others, one on either side and Jesus between them. So would you please join us in singing When I Survey the Wondrous Cross?
like to read from the book of Matthew in chapter 28, verses 5 and 6. There it says, But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he laid.
rejoice, O Christian, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujah, Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. Along life's narrow way, he leads salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my changing over um, John 14 verse 3 says 14 verse 2 and 3 says in my father's house are many rooms if it were not so would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and will take you to myself that where I am you may be also
to introduce these folks to you, and then we'll go into a time of uh, communion. Uh, this is Dixie Sunshine. I met him a couple years ago. This is Carrie Smith, Amanda Klein, and then my fr friend Al started playing together with us a couple years ago. Al um, Myers. <laughs> you shouldn't be nervous in front of your own congregation, right? Uh, Al Myers. Uh, I played jazz with him for years. And, uh, amazing guy. And so thanks, everybody, for coming out today. Appreciate them coming out. Alton, did you want to say something for communion? Uh, yeah, is this going to be your Yeah, this is song? communion yeah. song. <laughs> I want to give you three reasons this morning as we lead into our communion service why I believe that the resurrection of Christ is the single most important event in all of history. Reflect His image we have the event of the resurrection. First of all, the first reason I believe that the resurrection is the greatest event of all of history is because the Bible tells us so. The Bible uses the term raise or raised 99 times in the New Testament to refer to the resurrection of Christ or our resurrection with Him. In addition to that, the New Testament uses the term resurrection to refer to the resurrection of Christ or our future resurrection with Him at least 44 more times. And so we are nearing 150 times in the New Testament that there is reference to the resurrection of Christ, either directly or indirectly. The Bible tells us that the tomb in which Jesus' body had been laid was empty early on the first day of the week. The empty tomb was witnessed not only by the women who went to the tomb early in the morning, probably before sunrise, but it was witnessed by several other disciples, all of whom have given us their eyewitness accounts in the Bible. The Apostle Paul writes one of the longest chapters of the New Testament, 58 verses long, explaining the resurrection of Christ. Let me read a small section of that for you this morning. 1 Corinthians 15, beginning in verse 1. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, Otherwise, you have believed in vain. Notice, the Apostle Paul says, you have taken your stand upon the conviction that Christ was raised from the dead. And then he continues, for what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that He was buried that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. After that he appeared to more than five hundred of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living at the time in which Paul wrote this passage of scripture, though he said some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James and then to all the apostles, and last of all he appeared to me also. There is a wealth of reasonable evidence that what the eyewitnesses said they saw was absolutely true. It was not one or two witnesses that said they saw an empty tomb with vacant burial clothing still inside. Even hundreds of people claimed to have seen Jesus after He had been killed and was buried in a tomb for three days. The resurrection of Christ is certainly an element of our faith that is reasonable to believe if you believe in a miraculous God. Now if your God is one that must submit to your every wish and whim, then you might have a problem with the God of the Bible. Notice that Paul says in this passage that I just read, 
we should not forget we take our stand on the fact of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Then a little later in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, he says, But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. What Paul was trying to do in that passage of Scripture was help us understand that we have the hope of resurrection ourselves because Christ was raised from the dead. The resurrection of Christ is the greatest event in all of history because the Bible tells us it is. Number two, the resurrection of Christ is the greatest event in history because by that event all of history still pivots upon that event. Any reference to the date in which any other event in history occurs pivots around the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In fact, our current dating system of A.D. and B.C. or even B.C.E. and C.E. before the Common Era or Common Era still revolves around the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. In fact, our current dating system was developed to coordinate the various celebrations of Easter so that everyone in various parts of the world would celebrate Easter, the resurrection celebration, on the same time and the same day every year. For the most part, the resurrection of Christ is the event around which every other event in history hinges itself. Whether or not we will continue to accept that idea in the future remains to be seen. But it is true that the resurrection of Christ is the greatest event in all of history. And the third reason I believe that the resurrection of Christ is the greatest event in all of history, it is the only event in all history that gives us hope. It is the only event in all of history that gives us hope today and hope for tomorrow. And it gives us hope in any era of history. There is no other event in history about which the Apostle Paul could write these words. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash and in the twinkling of an eye in the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. And when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death is swallowed up in victory. Death is swallowed up in victory. There is no other event in history that can give us that kind of hope. Death is swallowed up in victory. And so we want to go into our communion time this morning, not only to celebrate the death of Christ, but to celebrate His wonderful and powerful resurrection from the dead. For in His resurrection we have an ultimate hope. The world may laugh at us, they may ridicule us, they may make fun of us, they may argue with us about our faith in the resurrection of Christ, but there is one thing that none of them can ever do, and that is to offer you a better hope for your future than the resurrection 
of Jesus Christ. The resurrection of Christ was certainly the greatest event in all of history. Now this morning, Dixie Sunshine is going to sing a song appropriate for you to lead your hearts into communion time. Blessed assurance, Jesus is Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His people, washed in This is my story, this is my song, praying to my Savior. This is my story, this is my song, raising my Savior.
There's the light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. There's the light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This the light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Every day, every day, every day, every day, every day, I'll let my light shine. Jesus gave me this light, I'm gonna let it shine. a hat. Um, Mike and um, let's see who do I got over here. Gib. Gib's here. Here you can pass my hat on this side. Uh, we need that. We need to tell these people we are grateful they came and shared this beautiful Sunday morning with us. Uh, so that they can do it again sometime. And so uh, we would love for you to be generous and put some money in the hat. Everything you put in the hat will go to them so that they can continue to sing for us in this way. All right? So while they sing there, do you have one more song after that? Okay, we want both of them. Okay. Uh, because we're going to take the offering for a long time. Okay. <laughs> All right. So while we pass a hat, go ahead and sing. Okay. All right.
Dixie Sunshine. And I want to thank all of you for being here. What a beautiful day this has been. God bless you for being here. Let's stand for a word of prayer and you may be dismissed. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day. And we ask your blessing upon everyone who has come to share this and to share the wonderful power of your resurrection this morning and to bring sunshine to our soul. For it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you for being here today. sent his son they called him Jesus he came to love heal and forgive he lived and died to buy my pardon and empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives because he I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is 